This is a short video overview of work that our research group is doing to find better ways for computers to see. My name is David Cox, and I'm the lead investigator of the Visual Neuroscience Group at the Roland Institute at Harvard. Together with my colleagues Nicola Pinto, David Dukan, and James DiCarlo at MIT, we've been working on developing biologically inspired algorithms that enable computers to understand what they see. I'm going to provide a brief overview of the problem we're trying to solve and our approach to solving it. Recognizing objects in a natural environment is something that humans do naturally, without even realizing they are doing it. However, what a computer sees is very different from what you or I see. To a computer, each image is just a collection of numbers. We don't yet have computers or computer programs that come anywhere close to the kind of sophisticated visual processing that our brains have evolved to do. Our ultimate goal is to build artificial systems that can see the same way we see, extracting structure and meaning from images the same way we do. However, building a system that can see is a daunting task. To understand how this might be done, we turn to biological systems. So, how does biological vision basically work? When we look at a particular scene, the light from the scene enters our eye and is measured by the retina, a layer of light-detecting cells in the back of the eye. From there, information is transmitted along the optic nerve through the midbrain to the cerebral cortex. Visual cortex is made up of over 100 million neurons, each of which is like a tiny computer, taking in inputs and integrating and transforming them into outputs. Neuroscience experiments have given us important information about how the brain is wired to process visual information. Visual signals stream through visual cortex in a hierarchical fashion, starting in the back of the brain in an area called V1, with successively elaborated processing in a series of distinct visual areas, which are located in sequence along the underside of the brain. At the final stage of processing, called area TE in primates, experiments have shown that information has been processed into a format that is much better suited to the task of recognizing objects than the original inputs were. Our goal is to build an artificial system that is organized in the same way as visual cortex, that can do similar computations, so that we can build artificial systems with similar abilities to our own biological visual system. While each processing stage in biological visual cortex is made up of millions of neurons, each stage of our artificial system will be made up of millions of simulated neurons whose outputs are defined by some mathematical function of their inputs. One immediate problem is that the brain contains quite a bit more computational power than your average computer. To overcome this problem, we and other scientists assemble large supercomputers made up of many individual computers. It is easy to assume that this is the main source of difficulty in simulating a brain. For instance, you may have heard recent reports of a group simulating a cat's brain with a powerful supercomputer. However, it's not enough to simply assemble together a huge amount of computing power. We have to figure out how to put all the parts together so that they can do what our brains can do. An analogy would be putting together metal and bolts to make an airplane. Until the airplane takes off and flies, we can't be sure we've assembled the parts correctly. Similarly, until our artificial cat can chase mice, we haven't yet solved the problem. Computational power alone is not enough to solve the problem. Even if we had enough computational power, we don't know how to put it all together into a working system. While studying the brain has yielded critical information about how the brain is wired, we currently don't have enough information to build a computer system that works like the brain does. For instance, in the artificial visual system that we introduced earlier, each simulated neuron in each layer is defined by a mathematical function which has many parameters. One set of parameters will produce a model that behaves one way, and another set will produce a very differently behaving model. Choosing another set of parameters will result in yet another model. Similarly, we can vary the number of simulated neurons in each layer. The problem is we don't know which parameter sets are good ones, and there's an enormous range of potential models to explore. Typically, in our field, researchers build a single computational model, then test it to see how well it sees. Focusing on one model at a time, however, limits the ability to explore this wide range of potential models. Our approach is to adapt high-throughput screening techniques from molecular biology to solve this problem. When biologists want to find an organism, say a bacterium, that has a particular property of interest, say, resistance to a particular kind of antibiotic, they don't test one bacterium at a time. Instead, they seed a diversity of colonies onto petri dishes. Each colony contains bacteria with slightly different properties. To find those bacteria with the desired property, a challenge, in this case, an antibiotic, is applied to all colonies in parallel, and only those colonies with resistance survive. Because this procedure is done in parallel on a large number of colonies at once, biologists can find the proverbial needle in a haystack without necessarily understanding what features of the bacteria produce the resistance. This is called screening. 
The biologist can then study the surviving bacteria to figure out what makes them tick. Adapting this high-throughput screening approach to our problem, we constructed thousands of candidate models. We then screened for those that perform best on a specific object recognition task. The models that we identified using this technique outperformed a crop of state-of-the-art computer vision systems across a range of test sets. These models more accurately identified a range of objects on random natural backgrounds with variation in pose, scale, and rotation. Our high-throughput approach could be applied to other areas of computer vision as well, such as object tracking, pedestrian detection for automotive applications, and gesture and action recognition. Moreover, as we develop a better understanding of the components of a good artificial visual system, we can use those hints to inform our study of real brains. Reverse and forward engineering the brain is a virtuous cycle. The more we learn about one, the more we can learn about the other. Tightly coupling experimental neuroscience and computer engineering holds the promise to greatly accelerate both fields. For more information on this research, please see our recent paper in the journal Public Library of Science Computational Biology, or follow any of these links.